I need to talk over the birds, but I want you guys to sit back, relax, and get yourself prepared for pretty much a machinery fix, breakdown, montage. So the sprayer is an issue, the baler is an issue, time is a little bit of an issue because I can only work for so long today, but I'm going to try to do this all in this video. So Ryan, this is what happens when you let your siblings use your stuff because I sent Ryan out to go spray and he called me up and said he broke it but in literally everything that he could have done wrong with it this is awesome because if he sprayed out everything he had to spray it ran 200 gallons through it at 15 gallons to the acre and the only issue he had was coming back home and a weld gave and as you can tell, I didn't weld it hot enough. But this goes right here. And I gotta finish cleaning it up. I'm gonna tack weld it back on. And then I'm gonna reinforce a little bit. I have a piece of, I got a phone call. I'll catch up with you. I just got the welder put back and I went for the more violent drastic approach. I actually was going to put a piece of metal. I actually had a, I had one already found, but I didn't have quite enough room on this corner here to really, where I really felt it would benefit. So I went with turning the torch up and burning a new weld all the way through uh, this busted piece. Once I had it tack welded on, I just went across the top, burned it all the way through. And then it did come through on the bottom. But then I did put another weld from underneath. Oh, still very hot. Um, down across. This was broke when we brought the sprayer home. It just broke the other day coming down the road. And if it breaks again, it'll probably turn into taking saws all to it, blacking it off, and just making a new piece all together. That'll be my next my next fix for it, just because. I'm trying to stay low budget on this sprayer. I mean, it's not low budget because I've spent, I got a few thousand dollars in it at this point and you see how it just so easily sits in like that. And you put pin in and you're good to go. So that way it can't fold out on you. Uh, went through before I got this thing's getting unhooked um, but I did go through I put three new filters on it for each of the sections of the boom uh, 20 bucks a piece but see they didn't exactly fit all that I gotta do something about right now but they didn't fit back onto the old holders for the other filters different styles uh, I went that route just because I wanted three of the same style filters so I can replace them just that simple so that's done and the only other issue i have on it that back on before we lose it is i have a little leak which i already tried addressing before we found out it was leaking again uh, but right here i'm going to be taking that off entirely taking this piece off because it's leaking around this thread here and it's leaking off of this piece right here and i do believe it sounds like there's some rust or some dirt or some crud that's back underneath or in, on the face of these two connections. You clean that out and try putting this fitting back on. If this doesn't, uh, doesn't actually want to tighten up, I'll be replacing this piece all together and I'll be hitting this with thread tape. Otherwise, uh, it's, it's good to go as far as I'm concerned. Um, he said we had a little bit of bit of product lost from it but wasn't a constant drip wasn't wasn't even really a, a drip but just enough where you noticed it so it's one of those deals probably not super duper accepted there was a screen in here I took out because it was crushed pretty common theme on this sprayer I uh, all of the filters uh, the screens were actually crushed to the point where yeah, if I left them in, they weren't doing anything because it was still allowing the, the product, the fluid, the fertilizer, um, 
to flow around the screen anyway so it wasn't doing me any good so I actually took that all together out all together um, I still need this piece in there so yeah there's nothing in there but it's still able to do its job also why I did go through and just put the new filters on the back so that it is being screened to a certain degree because out of everything that's going through this everything in the front I'm not worried about um, where it's going to plug is on the nozzles so I did not probably not accepted for some people but I didn't put the little screens in the fitting ends because we're just doing the the stream jets and the holes are big enough where they will allow some of that grit that may develop or accumulate um, to flow out of them. Ryan ran it. He says it ran great. He said the biggest thing that surprised him was the fact that he ran out so quick because it's 42 feet. It was 45, but I took off the outer extensions. Uh, the end of the boom here, there was actually another arm. You can see where we cut it off. There's another arm and another nozzle that was supposed to be folded out again. And it was more of a hassle than I felt it was worth. It was just another pinch point on the hose for what I'm using this thing for. And what Ryan pretty much confirmed it was even at 42 feet, 42 and a half or whatever it is, uh, you're still able to cover a very large amount of acres and a very short amount of time and run out of product really quick. Um, I do believe it was a little over 200 gallons at the set rate was 15 gallons to the acre. And Ryan, I saw, I looked it on the monitor because it keeps track of how much, how long it was running and all that. And I think he did it in less than 30 minutes. And I know he was taking his time because I told him to take his time. Nothing else is going to irritate me more than find out that he was rushed and something got destroyed. This, this is a, a non-starter. That was, that's, that's totally acceptable. So as far as I'm concerned with this, other than a, fixing that, I got a cable tie, that hose right there. The sprayer is good to go. Put the stands back on it, back in the machine shed, and forget about it. Um, for those of you that are eagle-eyed enough that notice there's 25 gallons of fertilizer in there, uh, that is not initially meant for spraying uh, for, for spraying hay and um, that's actually meant for side dressing corn. I had 25 gallons left over. I have had like maybe 10 gallons left in the cultivator. We're done with that. I have to fix it. It has issues with it, but I need parts. Your standard running stuff, S tines and a, and a, and a wheel. And if you're really interested in about it, maybe I'll do a video on it. Comment down below if you want me to do a video on going through the cultivator, but I'm going to actually take off the majority of the fertilizer hoses that are on that and revamp it. I don't like it. Um, the motor, I do believe the pump on it is getting weak to the point where it's been five years now and I'm starting to tell it's, it's getting pretty well shook. So it's probably due for a, a new pump. So let me get rid of this and get it out of my way. And I need to get that round baler out here. I need to hit it with the air hose and I can talk to you guys about what we have to do to that. Well, you guys just missed the rain and we actually got a little bit too much of it. If you ask me, this is the second shower we had. Uh, this, all that green material was just hit with the air hose right before the rain out of the round baler. And I need to go over this as quickly as I can because I ran out of time to work on this. I mean, the sprayer is unhooked and forgotten about, and I'm just starting to work down the list of things that this baler needs and what we've done to the baler uh, to this point and what needs to happen yet. Um, first and foremost, the pickup, nothing major, other than the fact um, I got one of the bands actually came loose, so I'm putting that back on, but I actually have three out. I'm missing that one altogether. I mean, I haven't had this one in probably for a couple years now. I'm tired of fighting it. I put three brand new bands in it, and there are different lengths uh, for these. I went through and I put in the proper band, the long one, because these are the, the bigger teeth. Um, I had it set out as far as I could so it wasn't hitting 
on the springs there and I went through three of them destroyed them actually tore up my belt it might not even be this one because I uh, I think I had to replace it. It did a pretty good number on it. Um, so I don't put one in and it works just fine. Cleans the field up nice and that's all I really care. I gotta go through, that's why the vice grip is here. I got a bunch of replacement bolts for here because the material sliding over them wears these down and then you can't take them off with the socket. So all four of these will be replaced. I got a tooth here that is loose. I got two teeth that need to be replaced all together. See, this is the problem when you're doing pasture ground, uneven ground, you're running the pickup as much as I hate it into the ground and all these teeth were nice and even and were exactly how they should be. And now I got a bunch of bent teeth. Um, it'll still work. It's not the end of the world. I'm not going to replace them out. It's just more of an eyesore for me just because I, I do try to uh, keep it pretty well set. Uh, we broke a roller. The other part is in the back of the baler or already in the parts bin. Um, this roller is in the, from the back of the baler. And this is what I figure was giving me issues the last day um, off of the first cutting I, I made down at the valley. Uh, I was having issues at the end of the video where the baler didn't want to wrap. Well, this is why. This evidently gave. I mean, I guess these are a pretty well known issue. The reason I knew it was a pre-existing issue is because see all this metal is nice and shiny right to there. And you see how it's rusted about a quarter of the way around. Um, I noticed that when we tore it out. I guess that's a, a pretty common issue. New bearings, new roller, thousand dollar roll right here. Um, yeah, I know largely because it's green, yada, yada, yada. Uh, this bar here is the same bar that's sitting over there. Uh, we ended up hitting it with the torch and the sledgehammer and beat it back into submission. Still not perfect, it's still kind of bent because when that roller broke, it jumped back and kissed this bar right here and put a nice good bend in it. So, oh, also we got these wear plates right here. I got those coming. That one's cracked and this one is ready to let loose um, the heads. That's how much is worn off of it. So I got those coming. Uh, you can see on the bar so we could get to work. We actually did some welding to it, but we ended up going through. See how that's ground up. See how that's ground up, ground up. These teeth are supposed to help divide the, the belts so they don't overlap each other. Uh, we thwacked them off just because we couldn't get it bent back out appropriately or far enough. Uh, but that bar is going back in new. And then the pickup has to have that done to it. And on this side, I'm pretty sure it's this side. Otherwise, I just walked around here for nothing. Of course, it's going to be dark. You can't see it. Um, wrong side dang it i'm gonna walk back over here uh on this side and my my battery is flashing so maybe this isn't even recording uh on this side this belt is coming out i'm either going to replace it all together or i'll maybe put a splice in it but it's got a cut in it the cut is actually right there right in the back <clears throat> and this is just common sense the belt's starting to tear like that replace it take it out get it fixed whatever you got to do and that's exactly what i'm going to do um the splice is right here um one of two things is going to happen either i'll take it out if i can pull that bar out maybe um i got a spare belt over there i'll put a new belt uh in get this one fixed and this one will be my spare i'll put a splice in it and that'll be good it's a short belt um, the long belts are over here. It's got four of each. Um, yeah, so I gotta deal with that. And then there's these spacers up here are missing on this one. So the problem is that's what destroyed my spacer. The belts were able to overlap when I go to shut the end gate. Uh, when you have material or you're starting a bale, it actually keeps these belts running true. But when you're on a hillside and say the belts like to overlap and try to chew into each other, as you can see, We've had issues, we're missing some of the, the rubber right there. Um, this got flipped over and I can tell you right now how you know when the difference between dust and smoke is smoke comes out gray and you can definitely tell it compared to the dust flying. I had some, uh, I was actually spinning the belts here because it was spun over and it wasn't able to turn and I had it smoking up on top. 
So I actually had to dump the bale out um, and flip this belt back over. Not the end of the world, it happens a lot. Not a lot, but it happens a, couple, a few times a year. So I went through, got all the dirt and dust, not all of it, but most of it, um, of the grass that we had made. This is some really nice stuff. I'm, I'm really happy with that, that second, second cut, first crop we did. So that's what all that needs to be done to the baler yet and grease it and that is ready to go. The rims look hideous, but we'll live with it for now. Um, that's, I gotta end this right now. So thanks for watching, thanks for tuning in. Working in the shed, it's boring, it's dull. It's not all that much fun when it's raining out, but I'd rather be doing it when it's raining than when I should be making hay. So thanks for watching, thanks for tuning in. Take care, take it easy, keep in touch. Anything else you guys wanna see us work on around here, make sure you comment down below.